Hey everyone, and welcome to another one of my weekly art videos. I'm often asked what the main differences are between watercolor pencils and traditional watercolor paint. And in the past, I have shared a watercolor pencil 101 video for you that is super thorough. And I've also created numerous step-by-step watercolor pencil and watercolor painting tutorials that you're going to be able to find. However, I have never worked on two studies side by side, one with watercolor pencil and the other with traditional watercolor paint, so that you're able to see the differences when it comes to both the process as well as the end results. And this is exactly what I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. I'm going to be working on both of these studies side by side, talking about my process and my favorite techniques. And then at the end, I'm going to be observing my end results and I'm going to be providing some of my main observations in terms of the similarities and differences. This way you can decide on what medium is best for you. And you can also get ideas on how to use these mediums more successfully, as well as how to combine them for more successful successful results. If you enjoyed this video and find it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can see more helpful videos from me every single week. With all that said, let's jump in. All right, so I have chosen a pair as a subject for my studies here. When I am working on this kind of study or exploration, I make sure to choose a simple object so that I can really focus on getting to know the medium more deeply or honing my process with the medium. So what you're seeing me do here is I am creating my preliminary pencil sketch using an HB pencil and I am making sure to create a very light sketch so that my pencil work is not visible through my watercolor pencil or my watercolor paint. I have different drawing and sketching tutorials where I explain my block in process more in depth and how I create my sketch stemming from basic shapes and, and always working from general towards specifics or large to small. I'll make sure to link to at least a couple of drawing tutorials down below in the recommended resources in case you'd like to check them out. I don't want to spend too long on the pencil sketching process because this isn't the point of today's video, but I do believe that drawing and sketching are very important. I do try to sketch as much as possible, so I didn't want to lose this opportunity to draw a couple of pairs. Okay, so I decided to work in three layers with both of these mediums. This way we can more easily and more fairly compare these two mediums. The first thing that I do whenever I'm going to get started with any drawing or painting process, and this is especially the case when I am going for mid to higher levels of realism with the piece or the study on hand, is I pre-select my colors. I want to make sure that I am setting myself up for success and choosing colors that are going to allow me to develop that range in both hue or color and value or tone throughout these pairs. So I observe that reference photo closely and I choose my watercolor pencil colors that are going to allow me to create that range of greens throughout that pair and also those browns in that stem. As I am choosing those colors, I make sure that I am bringing in colors that are going to allow me to create lighter areas, mid-tone areas, and darker areas in both the pear and the stem. The largest, most prominent, or most important area here is the green area. And this is why I made sure to bring in a yellow, a lighter green, and a darker green. And then the stem is pretty small, so I'm going to be good to go with a lighter brown and a darker brown. But I do want to emphasize how important it is for you to think of value or tone as you're choosing the colors that you're going to be bringing in. Don't just think of color, but think of value. How are you going to develop those lights, midtones, and darks? Once I have chosen the colors that I would be using for the watercolor pencil study, I go ahead and get started with that first layer. When it comes to both watercolor pencils and traditional watercolor paint, I always make my way from lights to darks. 
I observe that reference photo and plan for my lightest, brightest highlight areas where I want plenty of that white paper shining through and I make my way incrementally towards those darkest darks. And then once I make my way through that sequence, if I wanna go back to the midtone or the lightest color or whatever the case may be that I might need to work on transitions or darken areas or brighten areas or make highlight sections a little bit smaller, I go ahead and alternate between them as needed. But generally speaking, I always make my way towards darker use of colors and darker values. So what I start out with is my lightest color that I have chosen for this largest area, which is the yellow. I apply it quite lightly and all I do is apply it everywhere except for those brightest highlight sections. With my initial lightest layer in, I go ahead and change to my medium color, which is the lighter green. And I start layering this green over that lightest yellow color, only over mid-tone and darker areas that I'm going to be pushing more. I'm trying to stay away from very, very light value areas that I see in that reference photo. I want that lightest yellow shining through or the bright white paper shining through in lightest value areas. The white paper is going to stand in place for my brightest highlights, and I want that yellow to shine through in very light value areas. Once I have that second color in, I go ahead and change to my darker green color. And this time, I am only applying this color in darker midtones and darkest dark areas that I see in that reference photo, and I am trying to stay away from lighter midtone areas and, of course, the lightest lights. I am not looking to apply this darkest color in lighter midtone areas and lighter value areas. So, as you can see, we're layering on more color in darker areas and we're leaving more of that paper shining through in lighter areas. And I am making sure to alternate between my colors depending on whether I am developing being a lighter green area, a mid-tone green area, or a darker green area. I'm still not applying very much pressure at all, and I am working on keeping the transitions between my different green values soft and gradual. Right here, I'm going to start working on that stem, starting with the lighter color of the two that I have chosen for this area on hand. I first apply a little bit of this lighter brown around that base of the stem where I see some of this color in that reference photo, and then I start filling in that stem shape. With my lighter brown in, I go ahead and change to my darker brown, and I only apply this darker brown here and there, thinking of the irregular, imperfect, cylindrical form that this stem has. With my initial application of pigment in place, it is now time to do my first activation of color. So I bring out my container with water, my absorbent towel, and a couple of watercolor brushes. I decide to bring in a size 14 round brush and also a size 3 round brush. And as you can see, I start using my larger brush in this larger bulk of the pair, and I'll be switching to my smaller brush for the stem. I am taking a small amount of water at a time from my container and I am gently running my paintbrush bristles over this pigment that I have placed on my paper. This is going to activate that pigment and as you can see, I am left with more of a painterly effect and also the colors oftentimes become brighter than how they look when you first apply that pigment on paper with the pencil. As I am activating that pigment with water and my brush, I make sure to stay on top of water control, blotting my paintbrush bristles on my absorbent towel so that I don't get too much water on my paper. And it is also helpful to start with the lightest areas and make your way toward the darker areas so that you can preserve those highlights where you want a lot of that paper shining through. If you start with the darkest areas and you pull that pigment into the lighter value areas, 
you can accidentally cover up those brighter highlight sections and those lightest light areas. As you're activating that pigment as well, make sure that you are noticing how much pigment is collecting in your paintbrush bristles and constantly wash out those paintbrush bristles as needed. Okay, so it is time to allow that first layer in the watercolor pencil study to dry. And in the meantime, I'll get to work on that first layer in the watercolor paint study. So once again, I am first choosing the colors that I'm going to be using for this watercolor study. I'm going to be bringing in Windsor Lemon and a pretty dark rich green from St. Petersburg to create my different green values. By mixing yellow into my green, I'm going to be able to create lighter greens and mid-tone greens, and then I'm gonna use the green by itself to create those darker green values. And for my browns, for the stem, I'm going to be bringing in my raw sienna as my lighter beige brown, and I'll be bringing in burnt umber for my darker brown. Once I know what I'm gonna be doing in terms of my colors, I am going to get started with my lightest color of the bunch that I'm gonna be using, which is a very light green that I create by mixing together my Windsor Lemon and my green. Of course, for this first color, I have plenty of yellow in that mixture and a smaller amount of green. And the darker that I get, the more green I'm gonna be adding into the mixture. And just like what I did when I was working with that very first color in the watercolor pencil study, you can see how I filled up the entire shape except for that brightest highlight shape. So that first lightest color is in everywhere except for that highlight. And when I am working with watercolor paint, I do run my paintbrush bristles over everything a couple of times so that that entire area stays wet for a little bit longer. This way I can start dropping in the next darker colors and I can get these soft wet on wet diffused effects so that I can have gradual transitions between my different green values. If I paint too quickly or just go over things once, things are probably going to start drying very quickly and I'm going to be left with sharp defined edges around green value shapes that I start painting in. And I'm looking for soft gradual transitions. So I need to make sure that I'm dropping in the next darker color on paper that is still wet. Right here you're seeing me start to drop in my darkest green which is plain green from St. Petersburg uh, with very little to no yellow added in. So first I went in with green with a lot of yellow for my first color and then I went in with green plus yellow heavier on the green and I'm now going in with plain green for my darkest color making sure to only add in this darkest color in areas that I'm looking to darken. And once I was happy with that range of green values throughout this bulk of the pair, I removed that green from my paintbrush bristles and I started to drop in some of my neutrals, my browns, right there along the top of the pair where I see these colors in the reference photo. Once that was in, it was time to start painting in the stem. So I switched to my smaller brush. This is my size three round brush. And I started with the lightest color of the two, which is that light golden beigey brown, that raw sienna. With that lighter brown in, I started dropping in a little bit of my burnt umber, which is my darker brown. And I made sure to drop in just a little bit of that darker brown in sections that I was looking to darken. I wanted to make sure that I had some lighter brown sections in the stem and also a little bit of darker brown. And finally, with this watercolor study, I do decide to get started with adding a little bit of visual texture, a little bit of a modeled look, even in this point of the process, because everything is still wet and workable. So what I do is I create little teeny tiny blooms using my smallest brush, I start dropping in a little bit of my browns here and there and a little bit of green as well, just to start creating a little bit of that visual texture, that modeled look throughout this green portion of the pair. And with that, I'm done with the first layer in both studies. I've allowed everything to dry completely and you can certainly feel free to help yourself with a hair dryer if you wanna speed up the drying process, but it is very, very important that when you're working with watercolor pencil or watercolor paint, 
you allow that previous application of color to dry completely before starting to apply more pigment on top. My objective with the second layer in both of these studies is to darken the darker midtone sections and the darkest dark sections and really push that contrast. But when I am doing this, I always observe that range of values that I've already managed to create in the piece. If I feel that values are still on the lighter side, then I make sure to continue adding a little bit more of my lightest colors before going in with my darker colors so that I don't have a very stark looking transition or step between my lighter values and my darker values. It all goes back to that idea that I was sharing before, which I'm trying to take everything incrementally toward darker values. When it comes to my watercolor pencil study, things are still looking pretty light. So I do go in with my medium green before switching on over to my darkest green to push those darkest dark areas. I want to make sure that I have those gradual transitions between my different value shapes. I'm continuing to observe that reference photo as I am working on those midtones and those darkest dark areas really paying attention to where I want to keep those lighter value areas protected and uncovered by the medium green and the darkest green. Right here, I make sure to switch to my lightest color, which is that cool yellow that I have chosen for this piece to make those brightest highlight shapes a little bit smaller. But I make sure to go back to this lighter color to do this because this value is right up against that brightest highlight section and I know that by using this lightest color I'm going to be able to create a more gradual transition between my lighter areas and my midtones. Then I switch on back to my medium color, which is my lighter green, and I continue working on transitions between lighter value areas and darker value areas before switching on over to my darkest green once again. I'm still not pressing down very hard at all. It is important to manipulate that pressure that you're exerting when you're using watercolor pencils because the more pressure that you exert, the more heavily that pigment is going to be applied on that paper and thus you're gonna be covering up more of that white paper. If you apply less pressure, you're gonna be covering up less paper. So if you're applying any pressure at all, remember to release it gradually as you make your way into lighter value areas and you can press down a tiny bit harder if you are moving toward darker value areas or you're applying pigment in those darkest dark areas. Staying on top of that pressure control is key when you're using watercolor pencils as with any other drawing medium. And by developing those fine motor skills to press down a little bit more or release little by little, you're going to be able to more easily create those gradual transitions whenever you need to. After increasing the contrast in the green area of the pear, I worked on the stem a little bit more, first going in with my lighter brown and then with my darker brown. And once I was happy with the increase in contrast in these areas, I go ahead and bring out my container of water and my two paintbrushes once again to work on my second color activation. The second color activation is even faster than the first because I'm really only activating those areas where I just applied more pigment in this second layering that I just did. I don't go over everything. As I am doing my color activation, I don't spend too long in any single area and I don't obsess about smoothing out all of the texture that is left behind. I embrace the texture that watercolor pencil creates. Even little splotches left behind can help enhance the piece and create a little bit of that modeled, um, imperfect visual texture that pears have. Right here, I switched to my smaller size three round brush to activate that pigment that I just placed in the stem. And it was time to allow that study to dry once again. In the meantime, I'm gonna be working on that second layering in my watercolor paint study.
Just like what I was doing with the watercolor pencil study, I am just focusing on darkening those darker midtones and darkest dark areas, working on pushing that contrast so that things can look a little bit more 3D. I don't want to do any more layering in those lighter value areas and I want to make sure to keep those lightest lights protected, which is pretty much the same idea as with the watercolor pencil study. I've definitely developed a larger range of values with that first layer in the watercolor paint study when I compare it to the first layer in the watercolor pencil study. And with this, I mean that I'm able to see larger, darker values or more darker values in the watercolor paint study just with that first layer when I compare it to my watercolor pencil study where values are a little bit lighter. So I don't need to go back to my lightest green that has a lot of yellow in it. I go right in with what would be my medium color or my medium green, which is a mixture of yellow and green, heavier on the green. This said, I do make sure to go in pretty watery initially. I don't wanna go too thick and too dark right off the bat because I know that those dark green shapes would look pretty stark and pretty distracting. Not to mention, because I am now painting on dry paper, I'm gonna be left with sharp defined edges around the shapes that I am painting in. So I paint in those mid-tone shapes and then I soften those edges with a clean and slightly damp brush before applying a little bit more of my darkest green. I then remove that green from my paintbrush bristles and it is time to do a little bit of work in the base of the stem and also the stem. At this point, I just go in with my darker brown, which is my burnt umber, and using my size three round brush, I only apply this darker brown into sections in the stem and the base of the stem that I'm looking to push a little bit more. Right here, you're seeing me do a little bit of lifting with my absorbent towel. And before allowing the second layer to dry completely, I'm gonna go ahead and work on that modeled textured look throughout the pair a little bit more. I'm using my size three round brush for this and I do make sure to go in pretty watery, almost a tea or coffee consistency with my paint because if I go in with very dark, very thick paint to paint in these little specks or marks throughout the pair, that is probably going to end up looking very stark and very distracting. I want to be pretty subtle with this visual texture and this modeled effect that I am adding in. And I'm also only going to be adding this model texture in some areas, not all throughout the pair because it's really not necessary. I am using both green and brown when I'm creating these little specks and marks. When I'm creating this kind of texture in organic objects like vegetables or fruits, I try to make sure that some of these marks and shapes are diffused out and soft looking, which is why I made sure to create some blooms in that initial layer. But I also want other marks and shapes to look a little bit sharp and defined around the edges. This variety of marks and shapes is gonna make things look a little bit more natural. You wanna make sure that you're incorporating a lot of variety in terms of sizes of these marks or shapes, the way they're clustering together, their value and color, and also have some of them look a little bit blurred out and soft, and also others look a little bit sharp. Keep everything very irregular and stay away from patterns. When it comes to the texture in the watercolor pencil study, I'm gonna be working on that until the last layer after I have finished with all of my color activation. Because if I had already started adding in these little marks or shapes for the modeled texture, they would disappear and melt away when I go in with water and a paintbrush. And with that, it was time to allow everything to dry once again before going in with a third and final layer in both of these studies. My objective with this third layering of pigment is to do my final pushing of contrast, especially in those darker midtones and darkest dark areas. But I'm also going to be working on softening transitions, maybe making highlight areas a little bit smaller and adding those final details. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my medium color, which is my lighter green and also my darker green 
to darken general mid-tone areas and to push the contrast in those darkest shadow areas. And I'm making sure to soften transitions wherever needed. At this point, I do allow myself to apply a little bit more pressure, but I always make sure to release that pressure as I make my way into lighter value areas. I continue switching between my colors depending on what it is that I'm working on and the value of that area that I'm working on. And I'm continuing to observe that reference photo as I go. I want to make sure that I'm happy with my values throughout the pair and that general look of it before I go ahead and start adding any texture and smaller details. Right here, I'm bringing in my lightest color once again, that cool yellow to brighten areas a little bit more, maybe make highlight shapes a little bit smaller, and just make sure that everything is looking gradual between my different value shapes. And then it was time to do a little bit more work with my browns. I get started by using my darker brown to darken certain areas in the stem and also the base of the stem. I also go ahead and add in a little bit of my lighter beigey brown in some areas throughout the green portion of the pear. And you can see how right here I start adding in a little bit of a speckled mottled look starting at the bottom of the pear here with this lighter brown. Once I have some lighter brown specks added in, I go ahead and switch to my darker green and continue adding some more texture with that. I want to keep things subtle and soft looking. I don't want these little marks and shapes that I create to look too stark and too distracting. And I'm still bringing to mind that irregularity that I was talking about before. And I definitely don't want to create any very perfect drawn out dots, which can certainly be an issue when you're using a drawing tool. Okay, so I'm all done with that watercolor pencil study. And it is time to work on my final layering in the watercolor paint study. I'm pretty happy with my overall development of values in this one. I have very light areas, a wide range of mid-tones, and very dark areas as well. So at this point, I'm mainly going to work on creating a little bit more of that modeled texture throughout the pair. I use both brown and green to do this. I find it easier to create imperfect and irregular looking marks and shapes when I am using a brush. Uh, more so than when I am using a sharp pointy drawing tool because brushes are so flexible. I can touch the tip of my paintbrush to create very little teeny tiny marks and shapes and just press down a little bit more to create slightly larger marks and shapes. All right, everyone, and to finish up this video, I want to kind of list out the observations that I made in terms of similarities and differences between these two mediums. It's important to acknowledge first and foremost that watercolor paint is a painting medium and watercolor pencils are a drawing and painting medium all wrapped up in one. This means that pieces created only with watercolor paint are going to have more painterly qualities, while pieces created with watercolor pencils are going to show both drawing and painting qualities, depending on whether or not you actually activate that pigment with water, of course. So jumping right into the similarities that are shared between these two artistic mediums, and of course, do have in mind that I am taking my own methods and techniques into consideration as I am sharing all of these. In terms of similarities, it's important to pre-select your colors for better results when working with both mediums. I also always work from lights to darks with both mediums. It is very important to allow layers to dry completely before starting to apply more pigment on top. If you're looking to create light glowing paintings, it is important to keep your highlight areas protected and bring in the white paper as part of the piece. And finally, with both mediums, you cover up less paper and leave more of that bright paper shining through, 
for lighter value areas and you cover up more paper or use a heavier application of color or pigment when you're looking to develop darker value areas. And now moving on to the differences between these two mediums. First and foremost, I would say that you use less water when you're working with watercolor pencils when compared to working with traditional watercolor paint. And because we're bringing in more water when we're using traditional watercolor paint, it's likely going to take a little bit longer for people to gain that water control required to arrive at better results when working with traditional paint. When working with traditional watercolor paint, I would say that it is easier to overwork your pieces when compared to using watercolor pencils where you can probably get away with a little bit more layering. I think all in all watercolor pencils are a little bit more forgiving than traditional paint. You can even erase pigment off that paper as long as you haven't activated it with water and you can also cover up mistakes by layering more pigment on top. A very cool characteristic of watercolor pencils is that they have this surprise element to them when you activate activate that pigment with water because activating that pigment tends to brighten or even darken certain colors. One other thing I've found when working with watercolor pencils is that sometimes it's very helpful to use stiffer bristle brushes because this will allow you to more easily push or pull that pigment around when you're activating it. Another thing about working with watercolor pencils is that because they are a drawing medium, even if you go in with water and a paintbrush to activate that pigment, you are bound to have some amount of texture left behind because you have applied that pigment with a pencil. When you're working with watercolor pencils, something that's very important to have in mind is that the more textured your paper is, the more textured your end results will be because you're applying that pigment with pencil and that pencil tip is going to skip over that tooth or texture of your paper and that texture is gonna make it so that that pigment is not evenly applied or distributed on that paper. That is going to lead to more texture at the end. When you're working with traditional watercolor paint, this is not the case, unless you're using techniques such as dry brushing. Another key difference between traditional watercolor paint and watercolor pencils is that yes, we have to prepare ourselves with specific colors that will allow us to create that variety of values, meaning light areas, mid-tone areas, and darker areas since the beginning of the process. However, when it comes to working with traditional watercolor paint, it's through manipulating the ratio of paint and water in those color mixtures and the consistency of your color mixtures on your palette that you're gonna be able to vary how light or how dark that color looks. Whereas when you're working with watercolor pencils, it's more so down to the pressure that you're exerting on your paper that is going to allow you to vary the value that you're able to create even with one single color. So with watercolor paint, it's mostly altering the ratio of paint versus water in your color mixtures. And with watercolor pencils, it's the pressure that you're exerting when you're applying that pigment on the paper. These are variables that we have to get really good at controlling because it goes hand in hand with our value development. And the last thing that I want to mention in regards to watercolor pencils is that it is difficult to create nice even washes when you're using this medium, especially when you are painting large areas or shapes. What I like doing when I am painting a fuller piece that has a background to it or very large areas is I switch to using watercolor paint to paint those larger areas and I use watercolor pencils to paint the subject or the things in the foreground. I'll make sure to leave links to videos where you see me do this down below in the recommended resources section. So these two mediums do work very well in combination when you go in with a strategy. And it is important to know that even though these two art mediums have some similarities, they are also quite different. Practicing with both of these mediums individually and also exploring what you can do through combining them in pieces is going to increase your skill 
it's going to open up your horizons and you'll be able to discover specific ways that you like using them in order to arrive at results that you like. All right, you guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.